हेलो एवरीबॉडी दिस इज डॉक्टर विशाल त्रिवेदी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायो साइंसेज एंड बायो इंजीनियरिंग आई आई गुवाहाटी एंड वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रोफोरसिस सो इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द बेसिक्स ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रोफोरसिस एंड हाउ द इलेक्ट्रोफोरसिस इज इज एक्चुअली सेपरेटिंग द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स and how the technique is been evolved so initially the people were using the moving boundary electrophoresis and then they have uh, overcome the uh, deficiencies in that particular technique by the introduction of the solid support media for example the acrylamide or the agarose and as a result they have developed the zone electrophoresis so the gel electrophoresis is one of the form of the uh, zone electrophoresis and then within that we have discussed about the vertical gel electrophoresis how to cast the gels how to perform the gels and what are the different mechanisms of the stacking of the sample and as well as the other kind of uh, minor details and at the end of the previous lecture we have also discussed about the how to perform this electrophoresis in the gel so in that i have taken you to the my lab and the students have shown you how to cast the gels and run the gels so in the today's lecture we are going to discuss about the staining of the gel and as well as how once you got the stained gel how you can be able to do the image analysis we have the multiple options in terms of the different types of stain and uh, we have the uh, advantages uh, as well as the uh, different types of options available with the different stains so we have the comasi brilliant blue r250 as a stain and the comasi brilliant blue r250 is the one of the uh, most popular stain what people are using for the acrylamide gels and it is non specific so it is it doesn't stains the uh, any particular type of protein for example it cannot stain the phosphorylated protein or stylated protein but it will stain all the protein what is present in the gel but one of the major advantage of the comasi brilliant blue mediated staining is that it is a one step simple staining procedure and the major disadvantage is that the detection limit is in the range of the microgram per protein band or the microgram per uh, uh, protein present in the lane then to improve this people have developed the colloidal comasi brilliant blue solutions so the colloidal comasi brilliant blue solution has the 5 to 10 fold more sensitivity than the normal comasi brilliant blue r250 and added advantage is that you don't need to do the staining steps then compared to that people have come up with the silver staining the silver staining is even 100 folds more uh, sensitive then to the uh, comasi brilliant r250 but the disadvantage is that it is not a simple staining procedure it requires multiple steps and it requires the different types of uh, reagents and on the other hand it is also not the mass spectrometry incompatible which means if you stain the pro, uh, your gel with the silver stain you cannot use the protein from directly for the mass spectrometry to overcome this the people have developed the three more uh, the stains like the cybro ruby cybro orange and the cybro tangerine and all these are actually the mass spectrometry compatible uh, dyes and they are sensitive up to the 1 to 2 nanograms of uh, per protein bands and uh, for example the cybro orange it is a orange color dye and then cybro tangerine is also Uh, is a very very sensitive and it is very it is also compatible with the mass spectrometry so even after the staining once you got the band you can be able to use the uh, downstream applications like the mass spectrometry you can identify the protein with the help of the uh, different proteomics approaches so in a typical staining procedure what you are supposed to do is you have to first take the dye and then you have to prepare the staining solutions and once you prepare the staining solution then you incubate the gel into the staining solution and then you have to perform the day staining steps or in some cases the day staining steps is not required so to explain you the staining procedure we have taken an example of the comasi brilliant blue and how to perform the staining procedure 
So for the staining of the gel with the Comasi Brilliant Blue, the material what you require is the polyacrylamide gel which contains the protein bands, then you require a Comasi Brilliant Blue R250 staining solutions, then you require a de-staining solutions. So the uh, de-staining solution which contains 15 percent methanol, acetic acid 10 percent and that all you are going to prepare in the triple distilled water and you require a plastic or the glass container with the lid and then you need a shaker. To perform the uh, Comasi Brilliant Blue mediated staining, first what you have to do is you remove the polyacrylamide gel from the electrophoresis UT unit and place it in a plastic container with 10 volume of the Comasi Brilliant Blue R2 staining solutions. Uh, you agitate the slowly on a platform shaker for 30 to 60 minutes. Then you discard the staining solution and wash the gel with the triple distilled water. So that actually is going to remove the excess dye uh, what is being attached to the gel. And then what you can do is you can add the 5 to 10 volume of the staining solutions and as a result what will happen is it is actually going to remove the dye from the non specifically bound places and that de-staining solution you have to keep the gel in the de-staining solution for 30 to 60 minutes or until you will not going to see the bands until you will not see the bands until you will not see the bands. If the color of the de-staining solution is intense blue, you can replace it with the new de-staining solution so that it can be able to utilize or it can be start removing more and more dye from the non-specifically bound places. And if you do so, let us see if you stain the gel with the Comasi Brilliant Blue in the beginning, the gel will, will be look like as a black, uh, black film and this is all because the Comasi Brilliant Blue is going to bind every places irrespective of whether you have the protein or not which means it is actually going to bind to the polyacrylamide as well as the proteins and then but the affinity of the Comasi Brilliant Blue for the polyacrylamide as well as for the protein is going to be different. So once you do the de-staining de step so what will happen is the uh, Comasi Brilliant Blue is going to be removed from all the non-specific polyacrylamide gel but the place where you have the protein it is not going to be removed because it has a more affinity for the Comasi Brilliant Blue so as a result you are going to start seeing the protein bands. So this is the typical pattern of the protein band what you are going to get after the de-staining steps what you can see is that even between the bands also the dye is being removed by the Comasi Brilliant uh, by the de-staining solutions and this is what you have to uh, achieve simply by going into the de-staining solution. So after the every round of de-staining solution you have to observe the uh, gel whether you are getting the bands or not and accordingly you can optimize that particular step to see that you are uh, whatever you are seeing is actually the adequate and it is actually going to give you the appearances of all the protein bands present in the lane. Now once you got this band, once you got this image, what, what you can see is and what you can be able to analyze the two things. One is the position of the band, the second is the, the it's, it is, uh, distance from the origin and the, based on this and apart from that you can also be able to see what is the intensity of this particular band. So these are the three information you can be able to infer when you will actually going to do the image analysis after the staining procedures. So image analysis is a very very complicated processor because it requires the understanding of not only the band, the, the band of the protein band but also the neighboring backgrounds. So that is why it image analysis requires the some kind of assistance from the softwares which actually is going to integrate and which is actually going to change the image into a binary format and as a result all these spots are going to be converted into the binary format of 010101 like that and as a result what you can see is that it actually is going to change the image into a, uh, a kind of a 
zero one format and as a result what you will going to see at the end is for example if suppose this is your band okay so what will happen is every spot is going to be converted into zero one approach which means wherever you don't have the intensity that will be considered as zero whereas wherever you have the protein band it is going to be considered as 1 or 10 or 50 or so that depends on the calibration of the softwares so if you can calibrate the software and it will actually going to in, uh, analyze the uh, your image it can actually assign a random number to particular intensity and as a result you can be able to convert this whole image into that particular format and uh, that actually helps the softwares to understand each and every pixel which is present in the image and that is how you can be able to identify the uh, position of this band, you can be able to measure the intensity of this band. So, for this purpose we have couple of softwares which can be used to perform this function. So, these are the different softwares what you can use for the polyacrylamide gel analysis, these are Visionworks or the doc, I, the doc itself which is from the UVP incorporations, total lab solution series which is from the lawn linear dynamics, gel pro or image pro which is from the media cybernetics, NIH image which is actually a free software which is available from the American funding agency NIH and then you have Melanie or image master which is from Expassi and then you have the image master which is from the G healthcare. Now to analyze a image we have the discrete steps. So, what is there in the step 1? The step 1 you have to first detect the lane positions, the lane in which you are interested to do the all the image analysis uh, operations. So, in the first step in the image analysis you have to identify and mark the lane positions which means if you have a lane you have to first mark the lane that I want to analyze this particular protein land. There are different ways to do this for gel with the well defined bands automatic lane detection algorithm can be able to detect the lane. If the bands are smiling or not straight then a manual positioning and identifying lane is the best. There is a necessary consideration while doing manual positioning the bracket used should be large enough to cover the whole lane but it should not be wide enough to include the lane of the other lane. So, when you are doing the first step, first step you have to detect the lane in which you are interested to do the measurements. This has to be very precise so that it should only detect the lane 1, it should not going to take up the bands from the neighboring lane which means if you have a two lanes side by side you can just select the lane what you are interested to measure but it should not be so big that you actually going to take up the band from the neighboring uh, lane as well. So, once you are done the detection of the lane position then you have to go for the step 2. In the step 2 you have to do the bands in the band which you are interested to do the uh, position to, to know the position of that particular band as well as to know the intensity of the band which means within the lane you can have the multiple bands and then within this lane you can also select the band which you are interested to measure or which you are interested to analyze. Once the lane is defined your protein band in the lane can be defined by systematically scanning the lane profile and identify the region of the local maxima as a band. Then the step 3, the step 3 is that you have to do the background subtraction. So, once you select the band the you are not going to select the band but you are also going to select the neighboring background. So, that background has to be subtracted from your protein band so that you are going to get the absolute intensity of or of that particular band. So, the background plays an important role in identifying the protein band as well as measuring the protein in the band intensity. Background of a gel picture is non-uniformly distributed and made the measurement less accurate which means if the background is uniform you are going to see the measurement more and more accurate but if the background is non-uniform that actually is going to bring more and more trouble because software does not know what is your intensity and what is your background. So, if it is it is a uniform background it is actually going to give you the 
uh, more uniform numbers which means it is going to assign g very comfortably the 0 to the every lower intensity pixel. But if it is a lower high, lower high then it will not be able to judge where the your intensity of the spot is starting, where the your band is existing within the gel. So, that actually is going to uh, de, going to make the measurements more and more erroneous. Many methods of background subtraction are possible. In one of the method a replica image can be generated and then digitally subtract from the original image to correct the background. So, once you are done with the background corrections then you can go to the next step and ask the software to give you the intensity. So, the next step is the measurement steps. So, once the lane and the bands are defined it is possible to perform the quantification and the characterization steps. The amount in each band is quantified in comparison to the background information and the total intensity present in all pixel present in the band which means if you have a band you are actually going to get the intensity of each and every pixel of this band and that is how and that intensity will be in relation to the background what you have in the neighboring uh, to the surrounding this particular protein band. So, if the known amount of a protein sample is loaded then a calibration curve can be drawn and used to more accurately quantitate the protein band which means if you have the known amount of the protein band what you can do is you can in measure the intensity versus the protein concentration and you can be able to draw a calibration curve between this and once you have that particular type of calibration curve then you can be able to use this calibration curve to measure the intensity of the protein present in this particular band. So, this is a brief overview of the image analysis just to explain you the these steps in more in detail I will take you to my laboratory for an extensive demo on one of the softwares where the students are going to show you each and every steps with the help of the softwares. These softwares are available from the company so they may not be freely available to you to for practice but I hope this demo is going to be helpful for you to understand the whole procedure. In this video we will show you how to analyze a particular band of interest from SDS or uh, Garros Gel Electrophoresis Gels using Image Lab uh, software. So, here uh, I will show you how to open the Image Lab software and how to analyze different components. So, you have to go to uh, start and type Image Lab. So, it will open, uh, you need not to do anything, just this is uh, we are using new protocol. So, just have to go, first I will show you how to uh, analyze the uh, protein gels. So, this is uh, our gel image. So, this is the molecular weight ladder, um, first row and last uh, lane and these are the fractions. So, we want to analyze uh, what are how many different bands are there, first component and uh, what is the intensity of these bands and what is the molecular weight. So, I will try to show one by one. First, after getting the image or you can get from uh, you can open any image lab dot scn file from instrument. So, go to here on left side top panel you can see image tools. So, if you go there uh, there are different data you do not want to see complete picture. So, just uh, you can crop crop the image and um, like this. Just say crop. So, this is the uh, complete image and uh, go back here. After that 
you have to identify how many bands are there how many lanes are there just leave this to uh, software it will do automatically or in another way you can select manually also so let's see uh, how it will perform so click on lanes and bands so lane finder here lanes either allow the software to detect or you can do it manually so if i ask for uh, automatic uh, so it will see you can see on there are uh, lanes given on the top of the gel 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to 10 so this is something different or if you want to do it manually also you can do uh, suppose if you want to do enter number of lanes how many lanes are there so 10 10 so here you can adjust lanes see this is not fitting in the completely so you have to adjust like this to get complete lanes now you can see the lanes are completely adjusted uh, fitted in uh, fitted in the lane completely so this is another way uh, manual way so next uh, now after identifying the lanes you have to go to bands how many bands are there so you allow the software to detect the bands so here few options are there band detection sensitivity one is low uh, low means uh, better for most prominent ones so detection sensitivity low if you are keeping it low sensitivity then it will detect only prominent bands which the software can observe based on intensity otherwise you can do another thing uh, select high high intense uh, high sensitivity means it will select a faint bands also as you can see it, it has reason either or you can manually select sensitivity so uh, i am asking high uh, better for faint bands see how it will do see these many bands are there each and every single band it will be detected although some of here are um, left out but you can still manually add the band so if you want uh, only prominent bands so in that case you just select low which is better for prominent bands so these many bands so now question comes you don't want to uh, calculate uh, molecular weight or intensity values uh, that is um, uh, quantification for all these bands either you can keep these bands selected by software or you can remove so for deleting suppose if you want to add some particular band suppose here i want to add this band uh, bottom of this lane so just go add just it added another extra band so uh, if you want to delete some bands so you don't want these many bands you want to only calculate for this prominent bands you just to go to delete you just keep on doing till you get satisfactory uh, bands okay this way you can do so you can add also so after being done this uh, we have first detected the lanes and uh, in second we have detected the bands now it's time for uh, calculation of or molecular weight analysis so here the tricky part is you have to select the lane which lane you have loaded uh, the molecular weight marker so i am selecting the first lane and the last lane okay so it automatically came automatically it came so if you are using your gel of interest 
so in that case what you can do is you need not to worry about you just have to give your molecular weights suppose this is a randomly taken uh, by default it has taken biorad precision plus you can change this one also this pattern you can change also suppose uh, you want to add some new protein molecular weight standards you don't have this biorad precision plus you have loaded some other thing but you know what are the uh, first band appears on top to uh, lower bottom band so if you know you can add new just to go new standard or you can give the name suppose i am giving new molecular weight standards something x x y okay some company's name so after that you have to add each and every band suppose first one uh, i am just uh, giving these values only for convenience purpose 250 and the second band is 150 it need not to be these values whatever your choice of marker is you can give those values those kd values you need not to worry about what it has written it will automatically disappears and third band is just uh, say 99 and fourth band is uh, 78 and uh, fifth band is 47 sixth band is 36 uh, seventh band is 22 eighth band is 19 ninth band is 14 this is 12 and uh, last one is you can keep uh, 8 this is just for example purpose only this is not actually any standard molecular weight marker just for your understanding I am giving this one after uh, giving the molecular weight you just click ok and you select ok yes you want to uh, it is asking you want to apply yeah yes i want to apply so see here here this is the uh, molecular weight what we have selected see here new molecular weight marker xxy so here you can see what we have given is it is coming as it is so the next thing is you have to calculate molecular weight of these things okay so you just need not to worry about anything and you just go to analysis table so here analysis table it will give for each and every lane details with the proper uh, band percentage and uh, lane percentage suppose in uh, first lane it corresponds to uh, first lane lane 1 it corresponds to uh, molecular weight see uh, from lower weight higher one so what are the values different values and uh, absolute quantity this we will see in uh, uh, next part and band percentage how much percentage it is uh, these things uh, we can see so if you want to calculate suppose in lane 2 you have you have lane 2 in lane 2 this is the fifth band i think so it will give uh, what are the molecular weight so this is starting from bottom band number uh, this is one to fifth band i think so fifth band means on top fifth band is 87.4 kd See, this is 78 we are calculating for this one this is almost comes 87.4 kda and the relative front is 0 0.187 
so in this way you can uh, calculate molecular weight of the uh, your band of interest so this is all about molecular weight you can save this thing and uh, export uh, this result to uh, a new excel sheet so after being done this now we are moving to quantity tools so quantity means uh, you you know you have loaded uh, something uh, uh, what amount you have loaded in this uh, lane if you know that thing we can calculate uh, remaining uh, lanes uh, quantity how much we have so there is uh, two parts one is relative quantity select a reference band on the gel so you have to uh, select one reference band based on that it will calculate all the bands uh, relative quantity but it does not give any value suppose I am selecting this one this is the um, reference one so automatically it will calculate the remaining remaining proteins uh, lane 3 this is uh, lane 2 so it will calculate automatically relative quantity it is taking one for this reference one so based on this uh, it will calculate all the bands uh, relative intensity suppose if you say this is one what could be this uh, for uh, band one it is uh, 0.59 and band two 0 0.15 0 0.15 uh, 0 0.06 0 0.07 so in um, other lane 3 also uh, that band is this is fifth band so lane 3 band 5 that is molecular weight 7 the relative quantity is 0.89 so this is one if you are saying this is one this one is 0.89 so in this way you can calculate relative quantity and you don't want this you know some number suppose uh, how much uh, protein it is present in this one so in that case you can go to absolute quantity at least you need uh, two to three uh, bands so see i am selecting this one okay this is uh, i am saying this is the quantity of uh, Uh, 50 nanogram and uh, I am selecting this quantity of uh, 65 nanogram and I am selecting another one this is 25 I mean automatically it gives so you just uh, take your mouse pointer to any band you want to calculate uh, the quantity actual quantity so you calculate you can click on that one it will give automatically 72.214 uh, nanograms you want to calculate this band so you just keep that one it will give the value you want to calculate this one it will give uh, the value so in this way you can calculate absolute quantity of the any given band in the gel so you can export these results or uh, you can save uh, from this one also so after quantification of the uh, protein uh, lanes and the bands you can use this for uh, annotation also so you can go to annotation tools suppose you want to uh, you want to indicate this band okay you just uh, give the arrow mark uh, otherwise you want to show this band so this is also another way uh, you can take this as screenshot or you can save as a picture with uh, with these things uh, with annotation tools you can add text also suppose you want to add text here you just add something 
uh, suppose lane two like that lane two band uh, five okay so this is the way uh, how the analysis can be done using image lab software so uh, this is about all about proteins so now you i want to do uh, the same analysis for the uh, nucleic acids suppose dna so just go so you have uh, now you have dna so all the parties same uh, as compared to uh, proteins so you can go to image tools for cropping uh, you can crop it or whatever the part you want to keep you can keep that one and say crop after that lanes and bands so it is exactly same protocol for uh, proteins and nucleic acid also it will detect the bands low better for prominent bands i am saying i am asking like that okay so after that it detected lanes and bands also now you can go to molecular weight analysis so here also either you can give your choice of interest uh, molecular weights you can give uh, and you can create new and add the values this is here nucleic acids molecular weight base pairs so uh, in this way you can give or you can use one that has given in uh, already given in the software so as you can see this is already uh, this is depicting here what is the base pairs amount of each lane so here also this is same so the next thing is after being completed you have to you need not to specifically look into uh, what this band corresponds to you just go to lane 2 values this is the lane 1 this is lane 2 only single band we are uh, predicting that belongs to 78.6 uh, base pair value this is uh, in lane 2 so as you can see this is 80 and here it is coming this is 78.6 uh, base pairs so in this way you can calculate uh, the molecular weight of the uh, nucleic acids also and uh, the other part is quantity tools you can quantize uh, the dna also so here also same in case of uh, uh, protein analysis here relative uh, relative so you have to select one band suppose i'm selecting this one based on this it will uh, calculate the all bands um, uh, relative uh, intensity relative quantity or you can select a band standard one and uh, this is quantity this band quantity i'm saying it is as 30 nanogram so another band at least we need to this is as uh, 10 nanogram after giving two values you can click any band suppose this one 39.92 this one 55 and this one 63 this one 64 so in this way you can calculate the intensity or uh, absolute quantity of the uh, any given band 
you can use annotation tools also by giving arrow or showing uh, representing graphically also you can do same thing and you can export the screenshot also so you can save these things and you can export here the export options are there you can do exporting also so uh, i hope this uh, software information part help you to uh, understand the how uh, software can be utilized for analysis of uh, different bands and uh, molecular weight purpose or um, quantity quantification purpose so in this demo uh, the students have explained you how to select the lanes how you can be able to measure the intensity of in every steps and how you can be even be able to determine the molecular weight of the particular protein because if you have the uh, markers uh, because in the example the student have shown that uh, if you have a molecular weight marker run onto the gel on the uh, in one of the lane you can use that information even to calculate the molecular weight so with this uh, we would like to conclude our lecture here. In the subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss about the some more aspects related to electrophoresis. Thank you.